Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. If you've got a home bait tank, or if you're thinking about building one, you're gonna wanna watch this video because I'm gonna give you a tour of how I have mine set up. And make sure you hang around until the very end because I'm gonna show you the effects of some new filters I'm trying out, and it's pretty amazing. All right folks, so here's the deal. I've got a home bait tank here. Uh, I keep uh, perch, brim, uh, shad in uh, for catfishing. Uh, it's convenient. It's right next to my boat here behind me and uh, keeps uh, keeps fish alive pretty dang good, uh, especially in the wintertime, even in the summertime. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm actually replacing the pump in it. The pump uh, that I've got in it is a little bit small. It was an intermittent pump that I had in there and I'm also replacing some filters. I had a guy send me some filters, uh, shaddy filters, uh, to try out. I'm going to put a link down in the description below and some contact information on uh, where you can get these things. They're uh, pretty thick, a little denser uh, material than what you normally get. So uh, I'm going to try those out, put all this together and kind of give you a tour of the bait tank, let you see uh, kind of my setup, how it works and see if it's something that can work for you. First thing I've got is just a filter box. This is the same filter box that you can get uh, for ponds. Uh, you know, if you got a yard landscape type pond. And then I've got one of those pumps that go inside of it uh, is what I use to circulate the water. Now, here's the old filter material. This is the stuff that came with it. Uh, you can see there's a lot of clogged up biomass on that thing. It's kind of nasty looking. These things come in uh, two different stages. Uh, one is the not quite as thick uh, material, mainly made to get the big stuff out. And then that one that is designed to get the uh, finer stuff out. My tank's rather large. Uh, it's probably 140 gallons total. Uh, just a fiberglass tank, mini tank, like you would uh, see at a uh, bait store somewhere. I've got a uh, regular uh, aeration pump that you would use in a uh, in an aquarium at home. And it runs the two stones that I've got underwater. That's providing aeration for the tank. We've got one in there, and then one over here. Now this pipe right here provides circulation of water. And once I get the tank put back together, it will go in here and get my water recirculated. That's what the new pump looks like. A little bit bigger, a little more energy. Let's see how she works. These are the ones that were sent to me. They're a little larger than my uh, filters that are in there. So I'm going to trim those down, get them to fit, get a hole in the center of them, and uh, give them a shot. So basically the way this system works is you got the pond pump. It goes inside this filter box. You to get it centered up. This pipe sticks out the top. Now normally it would come out and go through this hole here in the filter material. Obviously these don't have any holes, so I gotta cut some holes in it so that'll extend through. The best way to do is figure out right where that center is. Let's cut out a little opening in there. For that hole to come through there. It's down right on top of that. Second stage goes on top of that. Come by him. There's the second stage to it. So this one's a little bit different. It's got a little bar on here. Put those in like that. You got the lid, so we'll get back on top of it. Be able to sink this down into the water, connect my hose to it, I'll be good to go. So I've got the pump back up and running again. There's the filter box underneath the water. There's the hose coming out, circulating the water. The purpose of this is, is to keep everything circulating through the tank. As you can see over here, a bunch of stuff had settled up on the bottom and it had stratified and it sank to the bottom and the water appeared clear but there was still a lot of biomass and material in it which adds to the bad chemicals in your water. So that is why you want a pump to circulate water, keep it moving so that some of it gets sucked back into the filter box where all the bad stuff can get sucked out. Add in your aeration uh, to keep oxygen in the water 
and he's got a pretty good setup for keeping bait alive. I came out here a minute ago to say how my bait was doing, which I did have one die that did not survive the day on the water. But uh, this water is amazingly clear now. Hopefully y'all got to see it. I'll try to show you some clips of it when I was just, I really wasn't planning for it to do what it's done, but it's done a lot. I, hopefully the video shows just how nasty the water was. And uh, look at it now. That right there is pretty amazing, folks. Pretty amazing. That water was pretty grungy earlier, and it looks pretty dang good right now. So anyway, I'll put you a link with some contact info if you're interested in getting some of these filters for your home bait tank, or if you've got like a, I've got a Shad Shack that I'm gonna put some in and try them out in there. That's what they originally sent them to me for. They said, hey, try them out in the Shad Shack, see how you like them. I'm gonna put them uh, in there, see how they work, and I'll keep you posted. Now remember folks, every bait tank is different. Your setup's going to be different and it's going to vary depending on where you've got it set at, uh, what kind of water you've got, whether you've got city water, well water, and even the variations in between all of those will make a difference. Uh, so it may take you some time to figure out exactly what your setup is, whether you need to add salt, uh, whether you need to add any kind of other additives to uh, help stabilize your water. Uh, also, keep your bait tank in the shade. Uh, that's something I failed to mention here, but uh, I have found that keeping it in the shade helps eliminate algae growth. Uh, algae will grow in one. I had this thing sitting in the sun when I first started using it. Sun could hit it. I didn't have a cover on it and uh, it would start developing algae. So uh, I keep a cover on it for a couple of reasons. One, to keep sunlight out of it. And two, to keep animals out of it. Uh, if you have any raccoons in your area, they will figure out where this tank is, they will figure out there's fish in it, and you will come out one night and see a couple of them sitting on the edge trying to pull your bait out of your tank.